Nintendo enters E3 2019 with a colossal first party lineup. If this were the Pokemon Championships, they would have so many top tier Pokemon around their belt, every other trainer would scurry. And with that many awesome games, we've got to rank them. So these are our most anticipated top games from Nintendo's E3 2019 first party lineup. They have a staggering lineup, Zach, so much so that we couldn't get every game here, but we're still going to talk about a fair amount of them. Of course, let us know what games you are looking forward to the most in the comments below. Out of all of these awesome, awesome looking games, which one are you guys most excited for? But with that, Zach, why don't you take it away? Yeah, we are going to rank them and we kick it off from bottom to top. Number nine is Town. This is going to be a new foray into RPG gaming for the people behind Pokemon. They do have another game that maybe we'll see later on down the list, but here is something brand new, and I'm pumped because it is a chance for them to venture outside of the foundations that they've established with Pokemon. What we know that series to be, they don't have to worry about it. Now they can do something different, and maybe with all the time they've spent building up such incredible RPG chops with Pokemon, now maybe they have some ideas of their own that could create a really great game even if it's smaller and maybe eShop exclusive. Yeah, I would actually like prefer for this game to be a little bit smaller and eShop exclusive. We don't need a ton of like big games constantly. We know that Switch is like great for smaller experiences like this and I feel like this is one that would be really good on the go. I love the visual style of it. We've seen gameplay although it is limited and I want to see how that carries over. How is the story of like one town basically? <laughs> the entire game taking place in one location is something that's intriguing to me. I really hope that it does stay localized, and you're right, I also would love to see this be a small experience because it'll be nice to fit in intermittently uh, between the beefier games that we are about to talk about. Maybe Gabe the Town is the whole world. We're all brothers and sisters. It's a small world after all. Uh, I hope that this game ends up being big in our hearts, though. Yeah, hope so too. Number eight is going to be Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, Gasp, aw, oh, whoa, what? How is this so low down your list? I think we're still safely excited for this game, and frankly, for everything else. It just speaks to how massive Nintendo's lineup is this time around. But I will say that the early look at Fire Emblem Three Houses, it's overwhelming for someone who's not super engaged and super up to date with all the intricacies of the franchise. So I'm still excited for the gameplay. But the things I've seen, Gabe, like, I, it's hard to follow. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the games that you just gotta just jump into. And it's gonna require deep, deep, deep dives. And when you're being thrown so many characters, so many locations, and, you know, frankly, a lot of them have names that are a little bit difficult to pronounce sometimes. Like, it, it's a lot. So, it's not until the game fully comes out that... I'm going to like fully be into it. But for now, conceptually, I think it's really cool. It's basically Harry Potter where you have like these like different like houses. And uh, I wish there was a hat that told you which house you belong to. That'd be awesome. But yeah, the tactical RPG elements, the tactical gameplay. I think all of that's still going to be really, really fun. We know that it's a awesome franchise that's been around for a very long time. And I hope that they deliver. But yeah, I mean, it being number eight isn't to disparage the game in any way. Yeah, absolutely not. And, and we're going to play it and we'll dive in and hopefully we'll learn more about this house and that house. Um, I, I will say it's also lower down this list for me because what has been shown isn't all that brand new. And something we've come to know from the Switch is that they usually take franchises and, and really mix them up. And it, based on what I know, doesn't look that different, but but maybe they have more to show at E3, so we'll wait and see. Let's move to number seven, which is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, a surprise exclusive for the fine folks at Nintendo and the house that made Mario. This one, Gabe, this is more your thing, but you've inspired some enthusiasm in me. I do like the idea of building your characters via their light RPG elements, the original story that they're bringing to the table. I hope that it's fun to have four on screen. I'm a little worried about that. I mean, we've heard a bunch of stuff from the Game Informer exclusive month-long coverage thing that they did. It was a cover for uh, the magazine this month, and I think it is shaping up to be really, really cool. Now, of course, Marvel Avengers more popular than they have ever been, so it's just really cool to even see a franchise that has been long dormant come back in an exclusive way for Nintendo Switch. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the art style, but I'm hoping that the gameplay and the story can make up for that. And uh, I, I know that you're kind of apprehensive about the art style as well, but if the game is fun, if the story's cool, 
I think I'm going to be all in for it. There's a wide cast of characters that keeps keeps growing. Hopefully, we get to see some more rep- uh, representation for the X Men. I'm looking at you, Cyclops. Where are you? Uh, I don't know. It just feels good to have Trying a game on glasses. like glasses. <laughs> it's almost summer. This game comes out in July, and, it, and it's soon, which I think contributes to a little bit of extra enthusiasm. Like we get to play it, and also maybe a little bit of extra, like ah, it's going to be out, so we'll just have to wait and see. Beat 'em ups aren't necessarily my thing. I hope there's a little more substance. Um, but Gabe, it's one we can play together. So, yeah, online multiplayer, nice. awesome. That moves us to number six and Astral Chain. Platinum Games bringing some exclusive heat this August. We got to see a bit of it earlier this year. It looks absolutely crazy. Gabe, why is this game one to really watch out for? Hey, when you tell me that a new game from the director of Nier Automata and the creator of Bayonetta is coming, that you can ride around some like robotic wolf in and fight these like giant enemies with like lightning weapons and these chains, and you have this like super acrobatic and cool looking fluid combat, I'm in for all of it. It's super Japanese. I think the story's gonna be absolutely bonkers, but I really like dig that. That's part of what makes Bayonetta like one of my favorite franchises. Like the fact that the story just makes no sense and it's crazy event after crazy event. This is promising some very stylish and fun combat i'm like seriously like looking forward to this Zach. i hope <laughs> that this doesn't get like any pushbacks of any kind at one point in the trailer you're like walking around in this like giant dog like suit of some kind it's so bonkers and, and it needs to be applauded for that you play as a uh, either a male or female in this like police force unit that is like tasked with like saving the city it, the city looks beautiful i think the game looks good for running on switch too uh, i don't know I- i'm all in on this one Combat has to be king here. Uh, yeah. We need to deliver on a really excellent action system uh, in order for this game to make it over the top. We already have Bayonetta 1, 2, and eventually 3 on the platform, and while they will be different, I'm sure comparisons will come up, so hopefully Platinum uh, can can hit it big, and then hopefully they can bring us Wonderful 1 or 2 at a later day. Now we're moving on to what I would call the big guns. We've reached the top of our top half of our list here, and uh, number 5, I'm scared to say it, but it's Animal Crossing. Now, for many people, Animal Crossing will be the number one game on their list, but you know what? Honesty is the most important thing, I think, and we got to say it's just not really our type of game. Now, we are open to this winning us over, and and part of me, Gabe, wanted to move this way higher because the enthusiasm of everyone else gets to me, and and when people get excited almost in a, like, being at a sporting event type way, I get excited too, and I hope that Animal Crossing on Switch can can win us over and convert us into wonderful little villagers. Yeah, it's infectious, the the excitement that people have for this game. It's been a long time coming, it, you know, ever to the day of, even back to the days of, excuse me, the first year of Switch, right, when we were first making these videos, and we would talk about franchises that we thought would be awesome for the Switch, and Animal Crossing was always once that got, uh, one that got brought up. And you and I might not have the most experience with Animal Crossing, but this is the one where I'm fully going to dive in and see once and for all if Animal Crossing and I are meant to be. I hope we are. I really really (laughs) hope because I know this is going to be a big part of their show. I mean, most likely Animal Crossing Switch will be very, very similar to the other Animal Crossings. I think it's just the way that they convey it and maybe a few of the little nuances they add, or maybe they do really blow it out. We, We spoke earlier in this list about Switch delivering just evolutions of franchises. If they can do that here, maybe it's our favorite. Maybe this skyrockets the top of our list, but right now it sits comfortably at number five. Number four for us is The Legend of Zelda A Link's Awakening. I think it's funny because people often forget we're getting a Zelda title on Nintendo's <laughs> main console in 2019, but yeah. but we are. I mean, it is a Game Boy game coming back in a beautiful new remastered way. This one is like, what do they add? What do they do? But even if they don't, Gabe, Price discussion aside, I'm still really pumped to play a beautiful Zelda adventure, a quality Zelda adventure, handheld on my Switch. Awesome dungeons, even more awesome boss fights, some of the best fights in in, in Zelda games. I really like the ones in this one, in particular with those nightmare bosses. It is a unique Zelda game, unlike any other one in the franchise. We've talked about that at length. Yeah, dude, like, my excitement for this one can't go unnoticed zach I-, I wish i had a little tunic i could wear how fun would that be oh you could gabe i in fact you should <laughs> C- cosplay gabe at e3 if you see him snap a photo and send it to the thing twitter 
the thing I'm most excited about this, other than to see if they're adding anything new, because, you know, who knows if they're going to or not. I want to see how you react to it, since this is going to be yeah. a mostly <laughs> new experience for you. Uh, I want to see just how you feel about one of my favorite games of the Game Boy era. I played on the Game Boy Color, not the original one, but still, like, this game had uh, an impact on me growing up, yeah, and it's still to this day. Well, this is ranks, not hopes, but I do hope that they are able to add enough content to not make... Like, I want our discussion after E3 to be about how great it's going to be and how cool it looks, not about is it worth it. So I hope that they... Nintendo, go figure that out. We don't have time for that right now. Number three on our list is an interesting one, and I'm going to put an asterisk here, Gabe, because Mario Maker 2 does not feel like a number three kind of game, but we have played, seen so much, and we know that it's coming so soon. It is hard not to consider that as part of this ranking process. If Mario Maker 2 was more under wraps and was off in November, it has a chance to be number one. But we're humans. We can't deny our, our weaknesses, our faults, our emotions, our feelings. And we know we're going to play it in a couple of weeks. So it's it's, it's at number three. Yeah, you're right. It would probably be way higher if it wasn't so soon. And, you know, we discussed that. Like, how much of that do we even, like, factor into the equation? The fact that it's so soon. And for me, not that I don't think uh, Mario Maker is going to be amazing, because I do. I think it's probably maybe even going to be the best game. Definitely the game with the most longevity out of all of these. It's just, since it is coming so soon, it does fall a couple slots. This would have been my number one if it was, like, a November game. You're right. <laughs> Which is weird, and it yeah, probably should it be is. Yeah. blasted for that. I mean, it's still high up here, and, and if you're keeping tabs, there are two games remaining. And uh, this was tricky of, like, deciding where we want to put them. Any of these, honestly, could come out as the winner. I think at least of the top five to me. That, that's kind of where this list breaks down. So number two is Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's no secret that both Gabe and I were a little let down by the initial reveal. I think we were hoping that this would be some spectacular new vision for the Pokemon franchise, and at first blush, it looks more like a tepid improvement. But we have seen very little. There are plenty of Pokemon to uncover, and that alone, the new generation, Gen 8, is exciting enough to me to move this way, way high and earn a top-tier slot. Yeah, I want to see what kind of changes they have, right? Because we've heard about these, like, weird alternate, like, evolutions. Maybe it's, like, armor. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that's still unknown. And I want to see what they introduce to the franchise for the first time here. I know the new Pokemon are exciting in their own right. But I want to see what gameplay changes are there as well. Because you're right. I, we want this to be a little bit different of an experience. And they still have an opportunity to do that, as you mentioned. So that is why this one is so high for me. Because, yes, we've seen it. But we haven't seen a ton. Although that's coming. And uh, I'm gonna have my eyes peeled. I like Pokemon. Zach. let's go. Brought well, me back. That's the thing. Man. We're gonna play it like even if it's not brand new. Like yeah. we're gonna play it. We're gonna be excited to catch the new guys. Excited to evolve them. Pumped to find the legendaries. Beat the game. See what our final teams are. Battle and trade. Like this is one that, for better or worse, wins a slot almost no matter what. I mean, I guess if it comes out and it's just like poop, then bleh, but it's not gonna happen. Game Freak and Pokemon Company and Nintendo aren't gonna do that to us. So. I hope it's new. I really am salivating for some elements that, that feel fresh, but even not, like just catching all the generators, that's gonna be awesome. And that brings us to our top number one game, which is Luigi's Mansion 3. And I can break this down very simply for all of you. The reason it holds the top spot for me is because Nintendo rarely does linear games of this fashion. Is there gonna be some really exquisite Shakespearean plot? Absolutely not, but it still is going to feel more like the kinds of games I love most, and that alone is special. Yeah, I'm also interested to see what they do with multiplayer. That's one of the things I'm really, really keeping an eye out for with this one. I have to imagine they're going to try to include something just because multiplayer and Switch, it's a thing that they love to do. So that's one thing that I'm excited for. And uh, on top of that, just structurally, how do they change it, right? Like there's been talk of like, oh, could it be like a hotel, like something way, way bigger? We will see. The jury's still out on that, but... Again, unknown is something I really, really love. As you guys can tell, I don't want to know very much about these games. If I could, I'd just be surprised by all of them. And that's part of why Luigi's Mansion 3 for me is very exciting. Yeah, and there's a chance that it does surprise us. Bringing in multiplayer, bringing in a hotel, where do they go? It's going to be awesome. I think regardless of how you order your games, it's going to be awesome. Because all nine of these should have a significant part to play in Nintendo's E3 2019 
show and we cannot wait to get there let us know your take in the comments down below where do you rank them which one are you most looking forward to i'm gonna run it down for you real quick from town to fire emblem three houses marvel ultimate alliance three astral chain animal crossing legend of zelda Link's awakening super mario maker 2 pokemon sword and shield and luigi's mansion Three. That's what we've got for you. Until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and are pumped to find out more about each of these titles. Uh, shout out to Damon X Machina. Until next time, for myself and Gabe, <laughs> Switch Force.